There is a curious anecdote in Lactantius's work on the deaths of the persecutors, in which he accuses the Emperor Galerius of being a traitor to Rome by virtue of being a deep covered Dacian. This claim is not found in any other historical work. In this video, I hope to evaluate the veracity of this claim and consider Lactantius's motives for including it. The passage in question reads as follows, quote, Long ago indeed, and at the very time of his obtaining sovereign power, he had avowed himself the enemy of the Roman name, and he proposed that the empire should be called not the Roman, but the Dacian Empire. End quote. Lactantius has plenty of ammunition on hand to support this claim, as shown by the text on screen. Galerius's mother Romula was born beyond the Danube, and was driven into Dacia by incursions from the Carpi. Galerius's father was reportedly a shepherd, and therefore Galerius was hardly of noble stock. As a result, Lactantius is able to use these facts and Galerius's appearance to engage in typical anti-barbarian polemic against him. However, this seems terribly unfair. Galerius's mother is simply a Roman citizen in need of refuge and aid due to the attacks of barbarians, and many successful Roman emperors had arisen from humble stock in the late 3rd century. See how this account of Galerius contrasts with a more favourable one found in the Epitome de Caesaribus. We see how Lactantius utilises Galerius' mother Romula's origins in order to show that's where Galerius' religious policy arose from. However, Lactantius merely writes that Romula engages in typical pagan practice such as sacrifice. This is despite implying her superstition was excessive. Galerius was nothing if not a pious Roman, and this is even betrayed by Lactantius, who comments on his deep devotion to the god Mars and his embrace of tetrarchic religious policy in his rule being divinely ordained. Lactantius also let slip that Galerius was planning to retire on the 20th anniversary of his rule, respecting the system instituted by Diocletian and hardly conducive with a plan to turn the Roman Empire into a Dacian one. What Lactantius is attempting to do here is create a dichotomy, Roman and Christian on one side, barbarian and pagan on the other. This is nowhere made clearer than by a short episode in which a Christian is reported as describing the persecution edicts as the triumphs of Goths and Sarmatians. This episode exemplifies Lactantius's narrative precisely. Lactantius is trying to frame anti-Christian sentiment as barbarian in nature. Lactantius also states that Galerius's introduction of a new tax on the city of Rome was due to his grievances about Trajan's conquest of Dacia almost 200 years earlier. Now that we understand the purpose of Lactantius's narrative is to Romanize Christianity and to barbarize the persecution of Christians, it's no wonder that Lactantius makes Galerius the key instigator of the persecution, who implores Diocletian to enact harsher measures. This conflation of Galerius and his paganism being anti-Roman runs contrary to the long and exceptional military career of Galerius, which started under Aurelian. In the following graphics, look at the sheer amount of victory titles Galerius accrued against Rome's enemies. Many titles were won by himself, but others were proudly acquired from the victories of his fellow emperors. In addition, see his tireless campaigning in and around Dacia displayed on a map. Furthermore, Galerius's victory against the Sassanids, in which he and two others reportedly sneaked into the enemy camp to gather intelligence, was one of the most beneficial of the Roman 3rd century. It added a huge swathe of strategically important land to Roman territory on the Sasanian border, resulted in the occupation of key military and economic outposts, and also resulted in increased Roman influence among the client states that Rome and the Sasanas often made war over. So now that we've seen that any insinuation that Galerius was disloyal is outlandish, and that Lactantius makes these claims in order to align Christianity with Rome, let's consider the possible reasons Lactantius feels compelled to do this. Before the great persecution of the Christians, there was another religious persecution against the Manichaeans. This edict against the Manichaeans survives in a legal compilation, and it gives us some insight into the reasons for this particular persecution. This edict reveals that Diocletian was motivated to persecute Manichaeans because their religion originated from Rome's Persian enemies. It attacked the integrity of Roman polytheism, caused disruption, and contained odd doctrines. Although the edict against the Christians does not survive, there may well have been similar motivations. Christianity was not a religion compatible with Roman polytheism due to its exclusive nature, and as a result Christians would not take part in typical Roman acts such as worship of and sacrifice to the imperial cult, and this was seen as unpatriotic. Furthermore, Christianity originated in Judea, which was a province that had regularly revolted and made war with Rome in the past. All of these criticisms of Christianity are somewhat preserved by the Christian apologist Origen, who in his work, Against Celsus, written in 248, quotes some of his adversary's arguments contained in his lost anti-Christian work called The True Word, which was written around 170. Celsus implores the Christians to respect the state, its religious institutions, and to fight militarily on behalf of Rome. 
He chastises Christians with a hypothetical. He states that if everyone behaves like the Christians, the Roman Empire would fall to the barbarians, and both Roman polytheism and Christianity would be destroyed. Origen's reply reveals that his and his fellow Christians' concern and allegiance lies with Christ first, rather than the Roman Empire and worldly policy. Therefore it seems that the evidence shows Lactantius' narrative is clearly false, and that he was cleverly trying to reverse criticisms of Christianity as un-Roman that had plagued it since at least the 2nd century.